What's up, YouTube? On this episode of Cottywampa Overland, we're going to be talking about the Gazelle T4 Plus Overland Edition. Cottywampa Overland is proudly powered by Dan Cummins Off-Road, home of the Lifetime Powertrain. Also in part by Overland Vehicle Systems, Faster Fleet, and Trail Rated Coffee. Be sure to come out and say hi to us at the Moore Expo, April 8th through the 10th in Springfield, Missouri. If you're looking to support our channel, you can find all of our apparel at Long Creek Overland. Kelly, you just bought this new tent. It's the Gazelle T4 Plus Overland Edition, is that right? Yes. Okay. We don't have anything as far as affiliation with this. Kelly seen this tent at Overland Expo East. He and Tracy uh, decided they really liked it. They bought it, and this has been his first trip out with it. So we're going to do a full review on it. One of the things that really attracted us uh, to the uh, T4 Plus is the fact that the plus part is this forward room that is completely mesh on top. Both sides open up to a fully mesh window screen like this. And then these actual doors roll back and mesh on these sides. So in warm weather, you still have a place to get out of the rain where you've got full ventilation. Okay. Um, still stay away from the insects. Um, and there's a separate drop down that separates the two rooms. Right. Th this room in here is the same as a T4. You've got your standard T4 door on that side. You've got all the same window panels that you would normally have. So you can get really good ventilation in here also, but you can separate, like I said, the two rooms. In contrast to the summer, on winter time, it actually has a, a fold down cover that you can cover the mesh and completely enclose this as well. So winter time, it's about 40 degrees outside right now and we've been in here and it's been great uh, with the small little buddy heater and it's on low, we've got a little fan for circulation and this has kept us really nice. Yeah, this has been a great area. Like I said, on those colder, windier days, we've used it on this trip extensively. What well, we set the three lawn chairs in here. Yeah. With the heater going, and, and and we hang out and drink our coffee here and eat a meal, and we're not out in the weather. You yeah. Know? And it gives us a place to come in and just really kind of relax. Um, and, and it has been really, really convenient for an ability to get out of the elements. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we are overlanding. We're camping, and you know, people ask us, "How do you do that in the winter time?" We're still out. We can enjoy nature, mm -hmm. but we don't have to be miserable to do it. Not with the addition of this. Yeah. Yeah, and that actually, that's a good point. Um, this isn't just been a benefit for us. You know, um, we had uh, some other folks on the trip. They also came in, sat down. Um, it, it's kind of a, a community resource in our group. Right. Yeah, and it's worked really well. And then, Deb, if you pan out this way just through that mesh, there's a beautiful river right there like I say, that you can still see. So now we've got this side, which is the same thing basically as the original T4. Yes. But instead we've got the, the petition here that moves us out into the extra room. So tell me a little bit about what you think about the sleeping area in this T4 plus. Uh, you know, really spacious. I mean, like I say, I can stand up really well, but you're taller I'm, than I am. I'm six foot, and I can stand up in it, and actually I can stand up in the middle. So you're looking at six three, six four, right here. For head clearance, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, well, like I said, this design is pretty much the, the standard Gazelle T4. Yes. Um, the addition of this door for the room, and we actually talked to somebody the other night who had been looking at a Gazelle for his grandfather, who mm -hmm. goes out with him. Yeah. Uh, Rob. Yeah. And he said the only thing that kept him away is his grandfather's 94. 94. Yeah. Over, overland generation. Overland generation. But the, the standard uh, gazelle doors would have been difficult for his grandfather. He saw this setup where you've got this big full open door. This is something his grandfather could easily do. The floors are completely removable. They're separate from the rest of the tent. They Velcro in place. Makes it very nice for cleaning it when you're done. Um, you get a lot of stuff tracked in. You can separate the floor, clean them, let them dry completely, and then put them back in the tent. These are also available separately, so if you damage the floor, you just buy a new floor panel, Velcro it in, you're good to go. You didn't just lose your entire tent. 
Yeah, and some of the other attention to detail is how do you, when you take these out, how do you reorient them? They've actually got red tabs that you can line up so it's not real hard to get them put back in. Yep. So we've talked about a lot of the good sides. Yeah. Um, pockets. There are pockets everywhere in this thing. It actually has here, you can see on that side, the divider's got the three shoe type. And then you've got the large pockets on all three sides. You have overhead pockets, which in this side I use for my uh, inflatable light, which lights the entire room quite nicely. Kelly, we've talked about a lot of the good stuff and how spacious this is. You know, you've got a single system set up here, but there's plenty of room to put a queen size air mattress in here. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, this is about eight foot by eight foot. Yeah, so it's a lot of usable room without a doubt. Um, so this particular this pot is eight foot by eight foot, and then you've got another eight foot by eight foot. Yes, yep. So it's a pretty big footprint. Yes, it is. Um, going from a three person mountaineering tent, uh, this is this is a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot more usable room, and you can stand up and change. And I'm going to say, <coughs> with the family, that was one of the complaints on the ten plus day trips was trying to get changed in in a really small backpacking yeah. tank. Right. Uh, it was more difficult, and this is going to give us a lot more capability. What are some of the disadvantages to this particular tent, or what are some of the things that you don't necessarily like? Uh, one of my initial concerns about a gazelle tent in general, and I borrowed yours for a while, your T4, uh, was a single single-walled tent have a problem in the rain. Um, and it's back to the old days of, you know, canvas single wall tents that direct rain on the inner wall causes bleed through. Okay. And we experienced that last night. We were in some cooler temperatures with pretty good rain. Warm inside. Warm inside, cold outside. Um, but I even turned the, he the heater off and ran it like that for four hours. It didn't change it. It was actual bleed through from the rain. Uh, the fly does not cover the ends of the tent. It does a fairly good job on the side wall. You can wall. see the shadows here. It, it comes down. Yep. And, and we, we have pictures and video of everything from this area down was bleeding through. There was, there, was, there was visible beads of water on the inside, and it actually ran in that corner where they were running down the wall. Now, the plus side to the design of the Velcroed in floor that water that ran down hit that Velcro seam and just went out. It didn't fill your tub up. Okay. So I didn't end up with a wet sleeping surface because of it, but I did have to stay away from the walls. Okay. Because if I touched up against them or my bedding got up against the wall, it would have been wet. As far as the outside goes, um, looks like it's fairly well constructed. Got a nice rain fly. I would like to see the rain fly be a little bit longer, like you said. Right in here is where you got that bleed through last night, right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. If, if this rain fly came down to about this point where I could have staked this out and kept the rain from directly hitting the side of the tent, I don't think we would have, would have had any of the problems. That, that, that would have solved that yeah, issue, it right? sure would have. And what that's about, my only complaint about it. Yeah, yeah, the, just that little bit of bleed through. I mean, yeah. and, and we've you used it for three nights now. Yep. And that's been your only complaint was whatsoever. It was just, yeah, just I, that I, little bit. I've been in love with it. Yeah, I've been very, very happy. Uh, that's the only negative. Okay. Uh, so, what about tear down and set up? That's a huge tent. It's a huge tent. It goes up so quickly. You can do it with one person. Mm -hmm. With two people, it really is three minutes. Yeah. I mean, you can have this from, from putting um, the footprint down Okay. to getting the tent up with the rain fly on, three minutes. I think we, we probably beat that last night because it was raining when we put it up. Yeah, we weren't wasting any time. No, we weren't. And we have, it, it, it just went up so quickly. Well, the rain fly is a little bit short on the end here. It does go all the way down on the sides. One of the things that we did the first night was we actually put some of our poles from our 270 awning up and actually was able to set up kind of a little overhang or shelter that you could get under on a sunny day. Uh, no, you know, another thing I really noticed that I liked is, because uh, this is such a large tent with so much sail area, there's plenty of opportunities for ground stakes, but each side has seven tie-downs on the fly also. 
So if you were in a high wind situation, if you put all seven on each side down to stakes, I'm pretty confident this is going to stay retained pretty well. Kelly, my tent is a T4, and yours is the T4 Plus, but it's also the Overland Edition. What makes the, what's the difference between an Overland Edition and a standard Gazelle? Well, the Overland Edition adds an included footprint, which is perfectly sized for the tent. Uh, it also includes the really nice stakes. Those are the coolest stakes that I've ever seen. Those are really neat. Yeah, those work really well. Um, yeah. We're in rocky terrain here. We've gotten them into the ground, no problem. We were in softer sand the other night. They work really well in that environment also. Um, it also comes with an oversized bag, which all gazelles have a generously sized bag. You can actually get the tent back in. Uh, this one is a water-resistant tape seam bag. So it's a tent bag that's actually meant to be outdoors. You, you could transport it on the outside of your so vehicle. So on a roof rack or, or on top of the bed or yep. a bed cover or something like that, yeah. you can transport it up there without any fear of it getting completely soaked. Exactly. While you're traveling. That's right, yeah. And so it just, um, and it's a, I, I think it's about $100 difference between the Overland and non-Overland okay. uh, edition. And the differences in the bag and the footprint, to me, make that a pretty much a bargain. Yeah, the bag, the footprint, and the extra heavy-duty stakes yeah. is well worth the extra $100, I think. Yeah, yeah I think it is. I, I, you definitely get your value for that extra $100. Okay. Well. When you get ready to pack this thing up, this is not something that you can backpack with. No. No. You know, um, and it's actually, it's pretty big, even packed up. Um, it's over twice the size of what your standard T4 is, and a standard T4 will not fit straight in in the back of a JKU. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have, you know, five, five and a half feet um, to be able to store this thing, right? Or put it up on top of the roof rack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is, compared to the T4, this is a big tent, even, even in the bag, um, and it is heavy. Yeah. Uh, it's really, can one person carry it? Sure you can. You're not going to want to go far with it. It, yeah. it is probably twice the weight of a T4, which is already a heavy tent. Yeah. One of the things that you noticed on the T4 was it has handles on each end of the bag. Yeah, for a nice two-person carry. For a carry. nice two-person carry. Does the T4 Plus? It doesn't. And, and it, yeah, I was kind of baffled by that because um, the, the, the front and rear carry handles would have been really nice to have on this. I don't know why they included them on the T4, but not on the T4 Plus. Well, maybe that's something they can fix them. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll leave a link in the description below to Gazelle. Again, we have no affiliation. We don't have, no. um, we don't get anything at all from them, but these are incredible tents. They're super easy to put up. Mm -hmm. All in all, with all of the good things that you get, there's not a whole lot of bad with this tent. I agree. You know, like I said, um, do, do I wish the fly came down a little further to maybe take care of some of the bleed through? I do. Still very happy with the tent. Uh, it gives us so much capability um, to be able to change, sit down, relax in inclement weather. Um, worth, worth the money in my mind. Very happy with yeah, the purchase. And it's super easy to set up, yeah. super easy to tear down. So that's going to cut down on your setup tear down time when you get to camp yeah actually yeah we had this up probably three minutes last night yeah. on a bad day five minutes which for a tent this size is really impressive yeah all in all we're really impressed with the gazelle tent we hope that you've gotten some value out of this video and hopefully it'll help you make an informed decision on what your next tent's going to be let us know in the comments below what you're running for your overlanding tent thanks again for watching Cottywampa overland and until next time, see you.